Emma, check this out. Oh, yeah? Well, check this out. Hold on, what are we doing? What are we doing? We're gonna see who's gonna bake their way into the final five. So oh, we doing? Yeah, we're gonna make you shake what your mama gave you. And you know you're gonna bake what Paul and Sherry make you. Welcome to, to the, the Great, Great American, American Baking, Baking Show. Show Holiday, Holiday Edition. Edition. Last time in the tent, Marissa excelled in dessert week. You nailed it. And the title of Star Baker. <laughs> Congratulations! While two-time star baker Alex struggled with his sweet treats. It's not a nice flavor at all. Ultimately, it was Bianca who came up short. Obviously, you haven't got all the numbers. You've only got five. And was asked to leave the tent. Tonight, the bakers tackle the notorious pastry week. I don't want a soggy bottom. Whose bake will get the perfect flake? Fold. Fold, foldy, fold, fold. Now, that's what a crust is supposed to taste like. And whose will end in heartache? <gasps> By the creators of the great British baking show. The, the American bakers nail this. They're better than British bakers. Do you ever think of becoming a comedian? This is the great American baking show. I thought you were going to get dressed up. Where's your coat? They didn't have my size. Emma, you know that. I'm a big dude. truck around. Oh, and don't forget the fork. Oh, hey, Emma. What you got there? A delicate and delicious gift just for you in honor of Pastry Week. You're the best. But you know, I got you something too. Yeah, something elegant and dainty. It's Pastry Week! For my pastry spice? Yeah, no problem. It's getting smaller, guys. Amen. Last week I was Star Baker, which was really a great boost of confidence and kind of just what I need. I can and nail it, I guess, hopefully. <laughs> right now I'm probably in the middle, but as the herd's kind of thinning out a little bit, it's really important that I break away and try to start leading the pack. Good morning, bakers. It's pastry week. It's time for the signature challenge. Today, you'll be making a citrus tart. You have one hour and 45 minutes. On your marks. Get set. Ooh. A little quieter in the tent with only six bakers today. Let's see how it goes. I love making pastries, but also I am also terrified of making pastries for Sharon Paul. <laughs> what makes a good citrus tart? A silky smooth custard with lots of flavor in there. It's all about the blind baking. I don't want to see thick pastry. I don't want to see soggy bottoms. I don't want to see any splits in the custard. It's essential that citrus is the star here, and I want to taste the flavor. Of that was fabulous. The key to making dough is a light touch. You don't want to overwork your dough or else it'd be rubbery. Cold butter today. Just what I want on my fingers right now. Morning, Sarita. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. morning. Tell us all about your citrus tart. Today I am making a Boxing Day tart. So Boxing Day is the day after Christmas in the UK, and it's a huge day for shopping, and I love anything that has to do with shopping. Sarita's Boxing Day tart will pack a punch. With tangerine and lime filling and blueberry sweet. You are my pastry hero. Oh. Just so you know. Since you are a fellow sweetie, I hope you do not disappoint. Oh my God! Oh, my <laughs> pressure. The more I can roll it now and the thinner I can get it now, the quicker it'll chill. To achieve an ideal tart shell, the bakers must roll their dough very thin. Oh my God. I did push ups before this and that was the wrong thing because now I like my. Now my arms hurt. Your dough needs to be super cold before you bake it. If the bakers do not chill their dough before baking, it will not do crispy consistency. 
Tell us all about your citrus tart. The main citrus is orange and lemons today. And then I'm incorporating fresh ginger in there too. That's a lot of ginger. It is, but it's how it all balances out. Correct. Brother Andrew's ginger and citrus tart will be filled with orange and lemon custard and topped with an Italian meringue. Help the ginger's not too much sherry. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna start making my filling. While the baker's doughs are chilling, they use the time to perfect their custard filling. You don't want it to be a soupy doopy mess. I'm just gonna leave it until it's right. It bakes within the tart. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but it's the way I've always done it. While Dana is exclusively baking her custard inside the tart shell, other bakers choose to heat their custard on the stovetop first. I don't want this to really thicken that much at all um, on the stove. I just want to get it hot so that it bakes faster in the oven. It's important not to overcook the custard or the texture will become too eggy. Is it ready? Maybe not. No, it's not. Okay. So, Dana, tell us all about your citrus towel. It is named after a good friend. It's her favorite thing that I make. Dana's Richmond's cherry lime tart contains both cherries and lime in the custard filling. It adds just like a hint of a cherry flavor and adds a really nice pink color to the filling. Pink? Yeah. Vibrant or trap? It's, it's my kind of pink. I'm not a vibrant pink person. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. You go for it, Dana. I'm going for it. With their doughs rolled out and chilled, the bakers are ready to get their tart shells in the oven. If they trim their dough before baking, they run the risk of having a short, thick crust. Thicker than I wanted. I hope I don't get dinged for that. I'm leaving the edges like that and I trim it afterwards. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna do it how I did it at home. I'll do it now. Why not? Bakers, you have 52 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. Halfway there. Oh my God. You're so precise. Yeah, I you love it. Okay, uh, pie weights are ready. The bakers are blind baking their tart shells, which means baking their crust with no filling first to improve the pastry's texture. I'm going to blind bake before I put the filling in and using the weight so that it doesn't puff up in the oven too much. It's going in. Bakers who do not blind bake long enough run the risk of having the dreaded soggy bottom. I don't want a soggy bottom. No soggy bottoms. Hey, Star Baker. <laughs> it's a new week, but thank you. <laughs> Do you make a lot of tarts at home? I make a lot of pies. Okay. My pastry crust is kind of an adaptation of my all butter pie crust. Marissa's manda lemon tart will be filled with mandarin and topped with Italian meringue. Do you trim your base after you've um, blind baked it? Or I trim it before. I just think it looks cleaner. It looks um, cleaner if you cut it before the bake. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let him scare you. I know, you. when he asks those Don't questions. Don't let him scare you, please. While the bakers wait for their tart shells to bake, some get to work on their decorative toppings. Meanwhile, a few bakers are still struggling with their fillings. Come on, come on, come on. You gotta come up. Is their filling thickening up? It's thickening up, but it's still not a baker ever. The temperature's not quite there. Why isn't it set? Bakers, you have 45 minutes left. This challenge is so quick. I have to lift it very carefully. I am pretty happy with that. I'm just cutting away my sides, and I'm going to put my filling in and bake it. My granddaddy used to have a clementine tree in his backyard. He used to bring us bags and bags. And I'm going to do my best to try to cut these into little star shapes, and then it'll be like a shooting star circling the top of the tart. The stars, clementine tart, will contain clementines in the custard as well as in the decoration on top. Did you refrigerate in between I froze thinking? to try to get the bottom to crisp up really nicely. Because the last thing you want is a soggy bottom. Soggy bottom, I do not want a soggy <laughs> we bottom. We don't want a soggy bottom. <laughs> I just have to fill it. Going in. It's pretty thick, but it's not like where I need it to be, though. I am trying to use some of my Japanese heritage in my bake today. So it's got yeast inspired by what you might want to drink when you have a sore throat. It's a medicinal thing, is it? <laughs> inspired by a medicinal thing, but does not taste medicinal. Alex's Japanese winter remedy tart will have a ginger pastry crust filled with yuzu custard 
and topped with ginger-infused meringue. For the custard to set, I'm gonna guess 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully this sucks well enough. Uh, I'm gonna take these two minutes to pray. I'm really slow, but I've got this. Oopsie. Oh, for God's sake, why did I do that? Shoot, oh my gosh. I sloshed my tart. I'm in trouble now. Have I done this? Oh, for God's sake, why did I do that? I sloshed my tart. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Sir oh, not good. Why? What's wrong? I got distracted. <laughs> I sloshed my tart. Is it going to bake in time? We're down to 30 minutes left. Oh, my God. I'm taking it out. It should be set and very creamy. It's got a few more bubbles than I would like, but guess what covers bubbles? Meringue. Oh my God, this is like a nightmare. It might fall in a little bit, but I don't have a lot of time. Bakers, 10 minutes. might burn my hands, but I don't care. They're so wet. I'm just winging it. Ten, nine, nine eight, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, four, three, oops, two, two one. one. That's it. Hello, Dana. Hello. Hi, Dana. Your crust looks very delicate around the outside. And the custard is this lovely, rosy, ruby color. Bravo. Mm -hmm. That holds beautifully. It's solid, but thin. It's really good. I mean, I really enjoy it. It's tart, but it's full of flavor as well. The tart of the sour cherry really marries well with the lime. I think you've accomplished something very special here. Thank you. Thank you. The meringue looks quite nice. Mm -hmm. It's split a little bit on the top, doesn't it? The flavor of your shell is good. I'm getting a little bit of egginess in the custard. Yeah. Well, the custard didn't set up exactly. I like the flavors. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate it. I love what you were going for with the decoration. I love the blueberry swirl with the colors. I just think it needs to come together in a more cohesive way. So what happened to the top here? Oh, I made a mistake. I sloshed it. Mm. Your filling's been boiled. You can see where it's aerated, and that comes from mixing too much. Mm -hmm. The base itself's too thick. The proportions are all wrong. You've basically got scrambled egg. It's just the custard. The custard is just too overwhipped, very spongy. We just want to make you better. You're doing very well. It's just we're getting into week five, and that's when it gets more difficult. Thank you, Sarita. Thank, Thank you, you Sarita. It's OK. I like it. <laughs> the meringue on the top has lost a lot of definition. It looks as though the ginger really didn't help with getting the peaks that you wanted from it. Mm -hmm. It has that acid in there that'll break down the protein in the egg white. Got it. Mm -hmm. The color of the custard underneath looks good. The custard is set beautifully. I like the flavors. Ginger's not overwhelming, which is good. It allows the citrus to come through, and it's potent and it's strong. Overall, you've made a nice tart, though. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Thank Sherry. You. But yet, you do have some leakage of the fruit. My oranges are weeping, and it's making me a little sad as well. But you see the bubbles in there? Yes. You can see you've been boiled. It's just gone in there mm -hmm. too high. It looks like your egg mixture is slightly split as well. Pastry is far too thick at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You can soggy as well. It needs a little bit longer blind baking, and it's very, very eggy. Oh, gosh. It's a shame. It's not one of your better bakes. Meringue needs more to it. 
The colour on the outside looks good. Be careful of the thickness of the paint. Cut after the blind bait, never before. It is quite thin underneath the pastry. Now, that's what a crust is supposed to taste like. Buttery, tender, melt in your mouth. I think you've created a perfect end of the meal pastry. Well done. Thank yeah. you. Oh, sherry fist bump. I'm really happy with how that went. I got a sherry fist bump. I'll take that. I feel good going into the technical and just want to keep this momentum going. I've made citrus tarts so many times. I've never a tart. I like the look of it. It's so no, For some reason, whenever I bake under the tent, the pressure of it gets to me and I get nervous. But I hope I do well in the technical because I really love pastry. Well, guys, we now leave your comfort zones. It's time for the technical challenge. It's hand-raised pies. Ooh, I want pie. <laughs> no, not that kind of hand raised. Oh, it's actually a favorite of mine. So please read your recipe carefully before you start. Now, as always, the technical challenge will be judged blind. So, Paul, Sherry, you don't have to go home, but you do have to get out of here. You have two hours and 15 minutes. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. This is a pie dolly. I do not know what a hand raised pie is. It's like kind of a spiced meat filling. It's obviously in a pastry. Who doesn't like a good pork pie? So Paul, why is hand raised pork pie your favorite? It's a very British thing, a hand raised pork pie. I used to have this for lunch for many, many years. They are just delicious. We're going to test the bakers quite hard on this one. It's about what temperature do they try to manipulate the pastry around the dolly. You do it when it's cooling so it'll stabilize, because if they try and do it when it's hot, it'll just collapse. What is a dolly? Well, basically, it's a mold that you actually fold the pastry around. Gorgeous. Quail's egg. Smack in the middle so you get quarter in each. So it's a beautifully thin pastry. Meat right to the edge of the walls and an egg right in the middle. Crimping it is a way of sealing it all the way around, and it looks very authentic, too. So, Paul, are we good to say that if the American bakers nail this, they're better than British bakers? <sighs> Do you ever think of becoming a comedian? Step one, we're supposed to cook the quail eggs. I'm going to boil them for an unknown amount of time. Curd most of my eggs. I think they're underdone. Just lost half of it. Step two for the filling, mix the onion, pork, bacon, parsley, sage, and mace together. Sage. We don't use mace a lot in the States. Just want to make sure there's enough salt. I thought this was somewhat of a mean challenge to pick because we're all American and we don't eat hand pies. This is the pork loin, and then I'm going to add the bacon. I have no idea how long they need to cook but I'm gonna assume that it's gotta be a relatively decent amount of time. How do you feel about Boy, Emma, we need a glass of wine. Oh, I <laughs> think we do. Step four, make the pastry. 260 grams of plain flour. So the other flour is 60 grams of bread flour. Sift the flours and rub in butter. Never used lard before. I hear it makes really great pastry crust. This is fat. It's a block of fat. Add the large, the boiling salted water, and pour over the flour mix. I need to roll this out and make my lids. Cook in some raw meat, which means you got to have a steam hole. Step nine, divide the remaining pastry into six pieces. The bakers haven't been told that chilling their dough is the most effective way to get their dough to take shape around the pie dolly. I'm just going to put this in the freezer for like three minutes just to get the lard and the butter to harden up a little bit. From what I remember, I think you want to work with it when it's still hot. Place the dolly in the center of the pastry. I'm trying to roll this up and somehow remove the dolly. <laughs> but it's not... How do you remove this? Somebody knows how to do it. I'm happier than I expected to be. He's so 
fast. Step 13, place a barrel of meat into each pastry case. I'm doing a very small amount, but there's an egg and there's filling. <laughs> well, it's not shaping up yet. This is the first one. One hour left until we need to see your hand-raised pies. 60 minutes. Whoa, whoa, what was that? That was my hand raising. <laughs> Top. A tight seal helps a hand-raised pie maintain its shape, and it keeps it from leaking. And we'll just leave them in as long as I possibly can. Oh. Ten minutes left. They look pretty juicy. You can't serve uncooked meat. Pork should be 160 to be food safe, and I'm like over 200, so they're definitely safe to eat. Ten minutes of time to kind of cool on the rack. They're leaking, but I think they're done. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up, bakers. I did it. Bakers, please bring up your hand-raised pies. Paul and Sherry are expecting six identical ham-raised pies with a golden brown and beautifully thin crust, a well-seasoned filling, and a quail's egg perched neatly in the middle. OK, these guys. The lid's been put on the outside, not on the in. You can see that the egg is in the middle. And it is flaky. Great flavor. A little bit of seasoning there. OK, moving on. You hardly have any filling because the dough is so thick. There, isn't so it? thick. When you're cooking hot water crust pastry, it's about keeping it thin. It becomes a waterproof little bowl for you to carry any meats inside if you're going to cook a pie. Quite easy to work with if you know how to use the fridge and chill it down. Good flavor. OK, moving on to this one. This is all over the place with shit. So thick on top. But actually... The filling has more flavor than the other two. OK, moving on. The flattened out. So what's happened is they're trying to build it up and they've flattened it down rather than building up the height. Where's the egg? It's been chopped up and put in. It hasn't gone in whole. It's underbaked. OK, moving on, you've got small squats, at least they're consistent. We do have an egg in the middle. Oh. And over-seasoned, I'm getting a lot of salt in there. Moving on to the last one. I quite like the look of them. Middle, nice and tall, though. This is a proud pie. And it's well packed. Well done. So we'll announce sixth place and work our way down. In sixth place? Tanya, we couldn't find your egg. In fifth place is Marissa. Fourth place is Dana. And third place is Sarita. In second? Brother Andrew, the pastry is nice and tender. It's all about the seasoning. Yeah. Which leaves first place, this one. Alex, nice colour, consistent, meat size is good as well. The egg was right in the middle and the seasoning was good, so well done. Thank you. Everyone in the tent at this point is really talented, so getting first in the technical is just a confidence booster before I tackle tomorrow's big challenge. Savour your win, because tomorrow we will be back for you to tackle your showstopper. Good job. <laughs> I promise you there was an egg in every pie. They were just soft when I put them in, and I guess they disintegrated. I, I don't know. Rest up, yes. thank you. Not a good day, so tomorrow. In the past, I let my insecurities get the best of me, but I think I've finally reached the point where it's like, this is an activity I love to do. I'm gonna go for it. It's really important for me to end today on a positive note and to move into the final five feeling great. So, got to get ready. <laughs> so, Paul, do you feel like Pastry Week has shaken up the bakers? I mean, everybody who was at the bottom is now at the top, or what's technically known as the flippity-flop. The, the flippity-flop. The flippity-flop, flop, we're calling it, yes. uh, The flip-flopping of the bakers is, is a normal thing. Sherry, I noticed a little shift in your demeanor this week. Well, we're in week five now, mm. and by now they should take the tips we've taught them and apply it. So for the Pastry Week showstopper, who really needs to bring it? Tanya and Sarita. Both are at the bottom. On the flip side, you've got Brother Andrew and Dana, 
Maybe even Alex if he has a good day. Each one of those bakers could be in line for Star Baker. We won't really know until the Bakers, today you must present six Napoleons, iced on top and filled with pastry cream, and 12 pommiers. You have four hours. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. I've got my flour, my salt, and my water. And I'm just making my base for my puff pastry. The key component for both the Napoleon and the Parmier is buttery, crisp puff pastry. I'm planning on making one batch of puff pastry and using it for both the Parmiers and the Napoleons. When the bakers are going to be making a Napoleon, they're going to create three layers of puff pastry with which they're going to introduce their own flavors to it. It's got to look professional. Really not a whole lot of elements to do today, but they're all very technical and have to be very precise. A pommier is a dainty, heart-shaped sugar cookie. What I do not want to see is a dense, rubbery, thick cookie. I am making my Keep Calm and Napoleon. <laughs> I'm in England, so I figured it was suiting. Tanya's continental confections will consist of chocolate palmiers and Napoleons filled with a layer of chocolate pastry cream and another layer of cherry compote. Have you worked with puff pastry a lot? Not a lot. Napoleons and pommiers are not something that I would typically make. That's why the, the name of this bake is perfect. I mean, I need to keep calm today. Keep calm and bake yep. calm. There we go. With their pastry base complete... I'm going to brutalize this butter. ...the bet into a flat block before folding it into their dough. I'm getting all my frustration from yesterday out on this butter. Both of these are really a reflection of my family and my Italian-American heritage and what we like to eat. We grew up eating Napoleons and pastries all the time. Dana's palmiers will be dotted with fennel seeds and her Napoleons will be layered with espresso pastry cream. I would never think to like roll up butter like that. That is Well, to crazy. me, when you make it a lot, you come up with different ways to do it. And this was the quickest way that I got it done for this, so we shall see. To create the signature paper-thin layers of puff pastry, the bakers must roll and fold the butter block into their dough several times over. Fold. More fold. Fold, foldy, fold, fold. One round of folding and rolling out is called a turn. Fold that over. So you've got, um, you got a layer of dough, layer of butter, layer of dough, and as I fold, I will end up with layers of butter dough, butter dough. So then when you bake it up, the butter turns into a gas, and then all the layers of flour will separate, and it gets crispy and perfect. It goes in the fridge. I'm going to give it 20 minutes, pull it out, give it two more turns. If the bakers don't properly control the temperature between turns, the dough could split and the bakers might lose their hard-earned layers. Morning, Sarita. Good morning. Tell us all about your Napoleons and palmiers. So today I'm making, when flaky is a good thing, pastries. Sarita's palmiers will be flavoured with a custom-blended French four spice and her Napoleons will feature a miso butterscotch pastry cream. Tell us about your dough first. I have about 495 grams of flour. I have 200 butter block. So you've got 250 to 495. For the butter block? Yeah. Is that not enough? What do you think, Sherry? Oh, no. Sarita, don't look, don't, <laughs> don't look at them in the eyes. Don't do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dang it. I broke the butter block means I won't get the layers I want. I don't know how to fix it because I've never broken a butter block before. Everything I've never done happens here. One hour down, three hours left. I puff. I'm going to make a second batch. Marissa, tell us all about your Napoleons and your palmiers. So today I have uh, my sugar on snow Napoleons and my golden rugola palmiers. Marissa's Napoleons will feature a pecan praline pastry cream and her palmiers will be filled with a walnut, apricot and golden raisin blend. Can you tell us about your pastry dough? Um, so I'm about two minutes from doing my first turn. How do you know when your puff pastry is ready to use? I can... I feel it. Yeah. Are you some sort of Jedi master mm -hmm. or something? I just kind of... 
never gonna finish. As Tanya works on her new dough, the rest of the bakers move on to flavoring their palmiers. Palmiers are so hard to get flavor into. Purple! There's ground fennel and whole fennel. Today I'm making for you guys my winter morning Napoleons and palmiers. Brother Andrew's palmiers will feature apple pie spices and his Napoleons will be layered with blackberries and Earl Grey pastry cream. Steeping the Earl Grey in? Uh, heavy cream. So you're making a pastry cream with heavy cream? Correct. I traditionally make pastry cream with whole milk, and I love that. But when I was practicing this, the whole milk wasn't holding up so much, so I decided to use the heavy cream, and it works out nicely. Okay. One hour left, bakers! One hour left! I thought you were gonna get dressed up. Where's your coat? They didn't have my size. Emma, you know that? I'm a big dude. Oh, I like your hat, though. Oh, thank you, it's yeah. Cute. I'm styling on the hat, yeah. though. The hat I could fit. Now to fold the palmier, you fold the ends in the way. Then you fold it again, and then we fold up. With the palmiers filled, rolled, and cut into their traditional heart shape. My little ones love these cookies because they look like hearts. Most of the bakers... I don't know how I'm going to get these baked, but I'll figure it out. ...get their palmiers in the oven. Hopefully you bake evenly. ...and turn to their Napoleons. I'm doing a weighted bake uh, because I want these to be very flat. In we go. Alex, good morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Right, Alex, morning. tell us all about your palmiers and your Napoleons. Yes, I very berry uh, Napoleon. Sorry, Emily. what did you say? Very berry. Ah, I thought you said something else. <laughs> <laughs> Alex's Napoleons will be filled with strawberry and lemon pastry creams, and his palmiers will feature a blueberry glaze. So in the palmier, I'll put just a light coating of a blueberry jam. So an open-faced cookie. Almost, yes, exactly. Caramel on one side, jam on the other. That's quite unique. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Paul. 30 minutes left, bakers! With all of their pastries, Puck gets to work on the fillings for the Napoleons. These are going to go in alternating layers of the Napoleon. The miso is going to add a little bit of like fermentation to it, and it's really tasty. This is where I get my flavor from in my coffee pastry cream. It'll be nice and rich. I just don't understand why these are taking so long. I'm just about ready to put my Napoleons in the oven. I mean, I would have liked to have been done with that baking. This looks done. These these are baking. Oh, thank God, they all came out okay. Too pale. I actually have to flip them. <gasps> I actually have to flip them. <gasps> you got it, Sarita? I'm okay. Can somebody bring me a baking sheet? Watch out. Um, Don't burn yourself. Uh, baking sheet, baking sheet here. I, think I was just gonna flip them, but... Well, you did, kinda, right? 15 minutes left. It's gonna be a bit of a photo finish to get everything decorated. All right, I have to take them out. At this point, I might as well finish as much as I can. I'll cover the light sides in pastry cream. Just putting on my hearts that I... I'm piping my Napoleons to my Earl Grey pastry cream right now. One minute left. I don't even have my palmies out of the oven yet. I think they're stable. It's just the puff is just underbaked. 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 6 5, 5. This is a disaster. Let's go. I can't do it. I can't do it. You can hit. One. Done. Time's up, guys. You got, you got half. You got some of them. Up first, hat. Please bring your showstopper down to the judging table. I think the palmiers look very good. Nice color, nice size. Proportionally, they're OK. I do like the flavor of the crisp, but they are dry. I was worried it had too much butter in it. If I remember rightly, I did question the amount of butter in the mix. Yes, and you were so right. Thank you very much. Can you say that again? You were so right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. Everything in this Napoleon is really there. Butterscotch should be more butterscotchy. Little salt at the end would have brought this more to life. Palmiers are quite big. Elephant ears. Uh, 
flavors are there. And it is quite buttery, I'm certainly seeing it on my fingers. Okay, Napoleon. It doesn't look very appetizing, that's my issue. Okay. The flavor of Napoleon is good. And I think you've got a nation in there as well. And then we get to the pastry cream, which is what I was concerned about. Yeah. Heavy cream, pastry cream, and adding in heavy cream, whipped cream. Yeah. Gilding the lid just makes it too heavy. You're right. Overall, the color on both the Napoleon and the Palmier are on the blonde side. You want nice and caramelized. Okay. Gorgeous flavor. Thank you. Bake is terrible. Okay, moving on to the Napoleon raw. Yeah, your Napoleon blonde, the flavor of the filling is lackluster. You struggled. Thank you very much, Marissa. Thanks. I actually like the color of the bake. Parmiers are a little bit lopsided. The flavor's good, but actually I think it's a bit dry. The temperature for your palmiers isn't high enough, and then ultimately it caused them not to be crispy enough, shiny enough, and dry. Let's try the Napoleon, shall we? You there? can see the layers, and you can see that the butter is so well incorporated, so it's flaky, it's not gummy. The coffee and the creme pap work beautifully together. Can I do this test? It shatters completely straight through and through. That is a perfect Napoleon. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Your palmiers, I have to be honest, painting them with this jam over the top to my eyes says that it's disrespectful to a palmier, okay. which should be light and crispy, delicate and elegant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. To do that coating, it's brave, but it works. Great flavors in it. Thanks. Really nice. Let's move on to the Napoleon. You've got some flake in there. Flavors in your Napoleon. Bright, the glaze over the top, good flavor. They're raw, unorthodox, and it kind of works. I'll take that. You, you're missing uh, six palmier, but you've got all the uh, Napoleon. Yes. My first batch of pastry, I broke the butter block. How'd you break a butter block? I could see the big chunks kind of, I, I, it, was, it wasn't <laughs> solid. In that scenario, you leave it out for a little bit longer and soften up the butter and allow you to reincorporate it straight back in. You okay. would have been able to save it without a shadow of a doubt. Really? Yeah. Okay, let's have a quick look at these, shall we? This is chocolate? Chocolate, yes. Underbaked chocolate and buttery. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the Napoleon. You did get good lamination in such a short amount of time. Yeah. You can see the layers that wanted to rise up beautifully. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's a shame you didn't get a chance to finish it. Yeah, it is. The cherries look good, though. Yeah, the cherries are <laughs> delicious with the chocolate, yeah. I'm going to look at the bright side. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. So, Paul, can you have great flavors and kind of do all right with your bake and still be safe? This is not the great American flavor show. It's the baking show. So yeah, the bake is the most important thing. Pastry week has been a tough week for our bakers. Tanya, bless her, I felt for her so much. She's been one of the most consistent bakers, you know, over the last four weeks. So it's Tanya in such a precarious position. The really awkward one was Marissa, actually. All the textures were wrong. They were raw. Ironically, <laughs> even though Tanya had less time to make a second batch, she got more flake than Marissa did. So who's in line for Star Baker? Maybe Brother Andrew edging towards Star Baker and Alex, actually. Yeah. You know, he was first in the technical challenge, and uh, although he did struggle a little bit in the signature, I think he's still in line for it. But you can't discount Dana. This Napoleon, best thing that I've eaten so far in the tent. Wow, yeah. really? Without a you all created some brilliant bakes this week. Very impressive. One baker never faked the flake. The star baker this week is... Dana. Congratulations. Thank you. But with sweet comes sour. The person leaving the tent today is...
Tanya. I know. Thank I know. you. I will always keep baking. It's my fun, my stress relief, my creativity. It's just what I do. It's obvious from the tears. It's what I'm passionate about. Do make that again when you go back home. No, you try it and then send me a picture. <laughs> just so I know what it's going to look like. Yeah, make absolutely. me feel better as well. <laughs> When you hit a bad week, you cannot be the worst one. And unfortunately, on every single challenge, she was right down at the bottom. And that saddens me because Tanya's better than that. And she knows the best baker I've ever seen. Dana was a star baker because she pulled out all the stops. Her signature sour cherry tart with that crust and the showstopper, divine. Best thing I've ever eaten in this tent so far. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Really well done. It's weird to actually you know, for baking to want an accolade like that, but it just feels great. Those were by far the best Napoleons I ever made. I am proud of myself. Last time in the tent. No soggy bottoms. The bakers took on pastry week. Now that's what a crust is supposed to taste like. And Alex. This is a proud pie. I'll take that. Both delivered tasty, flaky treats. But it was Dana who stepped up. That is a perfect Napoleon. Thank you. And earned her first star baker title. While Tanya... Not one of your better bakes. ...was asked to leave the tent. Now, only five bakers remain. It's always exciting. All fighting for a spot in the semi-finals. This is a challenge for me, for sure. Who will get an invite to the ball? Dancing my way through, <laughs> Brother Andrew. That's delicious. And who? We taste with our eyes first, and the first thing we see is the after party. Can you believe it's all? time for a new set of baking challenges on the Great American Baking Show, Holiday Edition. Seems like just an hour ago we were welcoming in pastries. It was. What's your wish for the new bakes? <gasps> Fantastic technique, mm. delicious treats, and triumph over recipes. What about you? Peace on Earth. Oh yes, of course, and peace on Earth. It's time for the bomb drop. Five, Five four, four, three, Two, one, happy, happy cookie, cookie week. week! Oh, I thought you were saying ball in your accent. Oh, no, bowl. Let's oh. go inside. Come on. It's good to get back in the tent. It's always exciting. Who doesn't love cookies? And getting Star Baker last week really gave me a massive boost of confidence. But at this point in the game, the competition's really tough. There's gonna be so much food coloring everywhere. It's cookie week. I make cookies all the time with my little ones. I feel like I saved my week, but maybe this will be my week. Good morning, bakers. Look around. The field has been cut in half. Congratulations on making it this far. You cannot take your foot off the gas now. Because it's cookie week! With today's signature challenge is cozy winter sugar cookies. You must make 18 identical sugar cookies in two hours and 30 minutes. On your marks. Get set. Got to move quick. At home, I make the fryers a lot of cookies. I feel a little bit excited for it. Cookies. Never made this many in this amount of time. Should be fun. I say that, but you know, I mean stressful. I adore cookies. The main thing that can go wrong with this sugar cookie is the sugar cookie itself. They need to be beautiful, golden brown. Color equals flavor. With the decoration I'm looking for, clean lines, elegant piping, and very fine finished work. The thing is with the cookie challenge, it, but there's no room for error. Make a mistake, they may not be going through to next week. The basics of it is just butter, sugar, flour, a little baking powder, a little salt, and then you can kind of add whatever flavors you want. Just add a little bit of nutmeg because it's a wintry kind of cookie. I use an espresso powder when I make mine. Cinnamon, allspice, cardamom, ginger. One of the big secrets of my chai spice is I put a little bit of black pepper. This will definitely make my cookies stand out today. I'm so excited to be making a cookie today that's inspired by my little girls. 
I'm making mittens. Sarita's cookies will be flavored with her personal chai spice blend and decorated with royal icing and buttercream frosting. Tell us about how you're going to decorate the cookie. I'm going to outline and flood my cookies and then I'm also gonna have a little bit of buttercream on the bottom just to show like the cuffs of what a mitten would look like. For texture. Yes. What temperature will you be baking at? I'm gonna do 365 degrees. 365 degrees? Mm -hmm. 355, 350 degrees. 375 degrees, finally. Question, that's all. Once the bakers have created their cookie dough, they must roll it out evenly. You'll make sure that each cookie is the same thickness. So I rolled it very thin, quickly. You just need to make sure I didn't roll it too thin. If rolled too thin, the cookie could burn. If rolled too thick, the cookie will be too soft in the center. I'm gonna start cutting my cookies. Just a rectangle. So cute. Oh my gosh, I can't stand it. I decided to do sweaters, because what's more cozy than a sweater? This shape is very intricate, and I don't want to lose the details. Good morning. Uh, would you like to tell us all about your winter cookies? Yes. I bake these cookies often for the fryers, and the guys at home love it so much. They love to have it with breakfast, which is why I'm calling it breakfast. Brother Andrew's winter breakfast sugar cookies will be vanilla, nutmeg, and almond flavored. He will decorate them with a nice royal icing trees. So you're doing quite a few trays baking. How do you make sure that they're all the same color when they come out? Well, you know what? I just was doing a test batch right now. This is my test batch. And that's the color that you're looking for. Oh, that, that is the color I'm looking for right there. I'm going to start baking. I'm going to put them in three, 20, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. One hour down. Oh, boy. 90 minutes left. It's just no time. No time. <laughs> Seem good. First batch is coming up right now. Oh, no, I'm reasonably happy with the bake. They're very lightly golden around the edges. It's pretty worried that it was not going to happen. Morning, Alec. Hello. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Sherry. Are you just cooling them down now, ready Trying for Trying to cool. It's a really long time for these. Alex's Kinako sugar cookies will be decorated with snuggly royal icing kittens. Your cookies look very delicate. Are you concerned about placing the icing on and it getting overly soft? They had a good texture in practice, so I'm hoping it stays that way. We'll see. The flavor, what did you say it was? This is uh, Kinoko. It's a roasted soybean powder. Kind of nutty. Alex always brings us very interesting ingredients. It's my primary flavor. Really? It's not, it's not particularly strong. There's a good amount in the dough, so it'll be very present. I'm just starting my royal icing right now. I think I need more powdered sugar. Starts my way through, Brother Andrew. It's a little too wet right now, so I need to add some powdered sugar to it. When I make royal icing, I use meringue powder, which is just basically dehydrated egg whites. Gotta get my artistic side going. Marissa's view from the cabin window sugar cookies will be flavored with almond extract and fresh orange and flooded with vanilla royal icing. It's creating a full on winter scene on the top of your cookie. Yes. How are you gonna keep the definition of the trees from spreading? I'm painting with food coloring on top of the icing. When I make royal icing, I use meringue powder instead of fresh egg whites. I find that the kind of the lack of moisture from the meringue kind of gives me that crust over the top. Clever. Are you going to finish that on time? Yes. Okay. I like this color. It's pretty. That's a cozy green. I just want to make sure that it is well mixed and it'll look nice with the brown on the coffee cup. Dana's coffee to go sugar cookies will feature espresso with hints of cocoa powder. She will decorate them with a royal icing flavored with cocoa, coffee, and vanilla. How are you going to keep your icing from being either too gloppy or too thin? I have little plastic containers that I put them in. It keeps it at the right consistency the whole time. And the decoration, you're flooding the decoration. Yeah, I have to flood like four different sections. I'm, I'm sorry, what is flooding? Flooding is a thicker icing on the outside and a thinner ice that when you fill the inside, it all fills to one level. So it finds a level like a swimming pool and then it sets. And so. frames it very well and even. So now I'm flooding my outlined cookies with pink flood. This is a cookie that 
Paul Hollywood is going to eat, so I'm aiming for perfection. To book a spot in the semifinal, I have to do perfection. I want them to look clean, and, you know, I'm trying to not be too heavy-handed. No one really wants a mound of icing. Thirty minutes left. God, I have a lot more to do. I really got to get booking on getting these done. I thought I had way more time than that. This is sort of just a sprint until the end. I thought I learned some speed, and then I just go kind of slow. I'm just trying to work with speed and precision. Doesn't help that my hands are shaking, but it's working. One down. <gasps> oh no. Am I missing one? Eight. Oh, God. Am I missing one? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, God. I miscounted. I'm missing one. It'll be a mad dash, but I think I'm okay. I've been very ambitious with my decorating, and this is where it becomes crunch time. This is the fastest I've ever had to decorate a cookie in my whole life. This is a 10 minute call, Bakers. Uh, not really. Did you want to come help me? You got like a bunch of icing on your arms. Though. And all over my new shoes. So that's great. Oh no. I think they look okay for me. <laughs> I'll give myself an A. I just gotta add the whiskers onto the faces and then polka dots around. I'm just worried about getting the window panes hyped on. I'm in the danger zone. I don't have time for the buttercream ruffles. I should have done an even easier design. It might taste better than it looks, but that's all right. This is a challenge for me for sure. One minute left. Seriously, already? Will I finish? Time will tell. Just in piping detail. We've got a bit to go. Hopefully it works out. I will have 18 cookies on there. Some of them don't look so bad. Some of them look like crap. But you know what? I got them. Oh, this might be a bad idea. Oh, God. Should have just left them. Oof. They're going to pass out. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Cookies down. Hello, Marissa. Hello. Hi, Marissa. Your painting is extraordinary. Thank you. Such a good job. It's just, it's just not finished. I know, I know. Well, the good news is that all your paint didn't bleed through to your icing, and that was because of your meringue powder. Mm -hmm. It dried out quick enough and yeah. enabled you to have that canvas to paint yeah. on. Mm. I'm getting the orange. The cooling of the icing is nice with it as well. I've never seen anything like this, so I'm no expert. <laughs> but I think they're really impressive. Thank you. <laughs> Nice painting. Thank you. This is what we've seen from you in the past. Would have liked to have seen more consistency in that flooding. It kind of gives it an uneven, inconsistent look. I do like the sweetness, which comes from the icing with the coffee, but the baking needed another five, 10 minutes. The piping looks pretty uniform, but your glaze has come over the side of the cookie. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you should have poured rather than spooned so you'd have it more consistent. Yeah. Or piped and flooded. The icing's got lots of flavor. The anise actually comes through, but it's a bit bland on the cookie. Mm -hmm. Look how pale it is. If it was dark, it had more of a bite to it. Mm -hmm. And you get a little bit more flavor from it as well, actually. Okay. Obviously, they're a bit messy because yeah. of the time. What happened to your buttercream? You told us all about this buttercream. I envisioned the texture. And buttercream would have been a great fix to be able to fill in and I, give dimension to the cookie. It's the nerves and the time, and I didn't do what I do usually at home. I just messed up. The flavor's good, all coming through. But it's just a little bit thick and underbaked. What temperature did you bake off? I ended up doing 375. Didn't need another five to 10 minutes in the oven. It's all about timing, that's all it is. I just made, I made a lot of mistakes today. You can't afford to make mistakes. I know that. It? I think they are perfectly fun. <laughs> <laughs> and they do look nice. Uniform, color, neatness, pattern. 
the kinder code does bring that little bit of nuttiness to it. Your cookie is very delicate. We said that before, you're, mm, the icing softened up your cookie. I just find the texture's, it's off. Okay. Thank you, Alex. I might be bad with time management, but no cookie's ever gonna get the best of me. I'm a fighter. I am really thrilled they liked the decoration as much as they said they did. I've done pretty well in most technicals thus far, but you never know what it's gonna be, so it could be a tough cookie. Welcome back. Now it's time for the technical challenge. Wait a minute. Do y'all hear that? The universe is sending me a message and it's telling me that you all will be making one dozen almond ginger fortune cookies per Sherry's request. The key to this challenge is nimble precision and identical perfection. I'm sensing there is a warm cup of tea in a tent far, far away. Uh, far away because we're gonna need you back here for judging. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You have one hour and 30 minutes. On your marks. Get set. Bake. Bake. I've never thought of making a fortune cookie before. I love fortune cookies. I've baked them a ton of times. Step one, write your messages. You will give this cookie first place. Can you read my handwriting? Let's eat more veggies. <laughs> you will bake someone's day. So Sherry, why have you chosen fortune cookies? This is a great challenge for the bakers because it seems very simple, very limited amount of ingredients, when in fact there are all these little nuances to the recipe that they're going to have to watch out for. Where do you think they're going to go wrong? I think that they might struggle most with the bake. I have not told them how long to bake it. And you want it so it's just golden brown around the edges. Too light is going to make a soft cookie, and you're not going to get that crisp snap. If it's thick, it'll bend and it won't set. It is quite tricky. I hope you like the message as much as you do the cookie. Uh, this cookie fell on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lovely flavor to them. Mm -hmm. With a little bit of ginger in there, giving it a nice bit of heat. I hope someone's fortune turns today. Back at the tent, the bakers have begun making their fortune cookie batter. I get Chinese takeout every now and then. Uh, Chinese takeout three times since I've been here. But I've never made a fortune cookie. 65 grams of flour. It's a very thin batter. Egg whites, almond oil. Ginger and white pepper. So I definitely want this to have a little bit of a punch. I'm looking for a consistency. Easily manipulate onto a cookie sheet. What do you do with that? Like you put it in there and then you like roll it in Add one tablespoon of batter to a small bowl and color it red. Step six, using the red batter pipe thin lines across the circle, pull the batter to create a feathered effect. This is kind of fun. It doesn't say how long to bake for. I got a couple air bubbles in one, and that's the one that was a little bit thick, so I think it's important to get it very thin. First batch is in the oven. I'm just going to bake them for five minutes, and then I'll get the next batch in. The bakers can only make two fortune cookies. A cookie should be a little bit dark in color. If they make more, they risk the cookies hardening too quickly to fold. You have to fold them while they're still hot, or they're going to crisp up too quickly and you're going to lose the shape. I'm working with them very hot. Hot, 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 ow. Hot. I'll just burn my fingers and work really fast. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Oh my god, that's so hot. One hour to go. Step 11, repeat until you have 12 cookies. I was happy with the first batch, so I'm just gonna do the same thing again. I'm just gonna keep making, decorating cookies, and I'll have them. It's not as crispy as I think it should be, so I think I'm gonna do seven minutes instead of five. These are gonna be too thick. I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm just gonna get the next ones in. I'm gonna go against the rules. I'm gonna put three in. I'm gonna leave them in for one more minute. They seem a little soft, so I might do one extra minute on the next batch, but I gotta keep going. 10 minutes left, bakers, just 10 minutes now. Yes. Some of them look, well, they're just large. Step 12, melt the chocolate. Step 13, dip the ends of each cookie in chocolate followed by the sand sugar. I think the 12 I have are reasonable. I 
I know what I'm doing here. Five, four, three, two, one. Time is up. Nice job, everyone. Bakers, please bring your fortune cookies down and place them behind your photos. The judges are looking for paper-thin, uniform cookies with a, and fortunes tucked neatly inside. Should we start with this one, then? They look good, but as they press down, they soft. It's soft. The bending, not snapping. Chew slowly. The flavor is there. The ginger's popping. Yeah, very chewy. So moving on to number two, they look quite neat. Very uniform. They are quite uniform. Ooh, Ooh nice snap. snap. You look great today. The cookie is paper thin. They've got the chocolate on the outside, they've got the sugar, they've got the crispy. snap. And the crispy. And you've got that nice heat coming from the ginger. Moving on, you see the fortunes that are hanging out. Oh, they're very yeah. soft. The batter looks as though it was spread on the thick side. Yeah, it's And then underbaked. Baked. Yeah, it's, it's still raw. Just underbaked. Mm -hmm. Moving on to these Land of the Giants fortune cookies. These are cookies. large. Oh, you've got different sizes. And the chocolate's sort of everywhere, isn't it? It's halfway up the sides, on the middle. Good red color. It snaps. Great snap. Because they're thin. The flavor's good. You are... Lay next to me. <laughs> Last but not least. Um... Thick fortune cooking. Yeah, I mean, they do look fairly neat, and they are sort of sealed, but it's raw. And look rubbery. how thick that is. It's just underbaked. Yeah. He said, snap. My fortune is, you will bake someone's day. Get it? Not make someone's day, bake someone's day. <laughs> In fifth place, we have these cookies. Uh, the batter's too thick, and they're not baked long enough. Brother Andrew is fourth. Marissa. In second spot is this one. So they were just far too big, but the crack was there, and the taste was there. Thanks. And that leaves us with first. <laughs> Alex, well done. Very consistent. The feathering is fine. And the sugar decoration is perfect. Thank Congratulations. You. Appreciate it. Congratulations, Alex. Fortune has smiled upon you. You can go savor your win and get a good night's nice rest. We will be back here tomorrow. Cookies are not my thing, but I will always take a technical. Just a little bit of the pressure off. I think I had an up and down day today. It doesn't feel good to come in fifth place in the technical. Hopefully, I'll be able to recover tomorrow. Cookie, cookie. I've never been so stressed about cookies in my life. Right? Today is showstopper day. Good luck, guys. It's weird to think that this showstopper will help determine who moves on to the semifinals, and saying semifinals is just. Wow. Is there a secret to making the perfect cookie? A cookie in the States is a biscuit that bends in the snaps, and that's the secret. You just confuse me even more with that. Yeah. Going into the showstopper, who's in a good position? I think Alex and Marissa are at the moment in line for Star Baker with Alex out front. It's a horse race that just keeps going. Keeps changing. Keeps changing it. It's a semi-final next week. Brother Andrew, Sarita, and Dana have got a little bit of catching up to do in the showstopper. Time for them to get serious. Mm. Welcome back, bakers. We showstopper challenge. And this one is a mammoth. One might even say towering. It is a tower, a macaron tower. You need to deliver two different flavors of your tasty footed treats. You have four hours. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. I like making macarons. I hope I can do a good job of making them today, though. The girls love macarons because they're little. When I was a little girl, I always loved them, too. So I'm really excited to make these today. The bakers are under a huge amount of pressure with this challenge. Macarons are not that simple. A good macaron should be crispy on the outside and beautiful and soft on the inside. Beat it too much, they'll be flat as a pancake. Also, the filling, it's quite small, so they've got to think of a strong, punchy flavor to go in the middle of it. The base for macarons is almond flour, sugar, and egg white. 
Macarons have two different types of sugar in them. You add the super fine sugar to the egg whites and the powdered sugar to the dry ingredients. You have really well. This is a great showstopper challenge because it brings delicate drama to the tent. It's going to test the techniques of these bakers. And when we're finished, if it's done right, we're going to have some amazing, colorful centerpieces. So now I'm gonna start my egg whites. I'm starting the meringue right now. I'm just waiting for stiff peaks. A meringue composed of whipped egg whites and sugar is ready when it is smooth and shiny with stiff peaks that stay put in the bowl. We want some stiff peaks. I would say this stage is very precise, almost scientific. So very critical to get this right because this is basically what the cookie is made of. So today I'm doing my New Year's black and white ball macaron tower. Marissa is ringing in the new year with a midnight blackberry macaron filled with a sweet blackberry curd and a bananas foster macaron complete with a rum caramel. So the colors of your macaron are going to be a purple and a white. The black macarons will have a little activated charcoal to bring kind of a deep, so they should be black. And I do have a little white food coloring for my bananas foster. Banana seems to be an unusual flavor for a macaron. You like banana, right? I do like banana. Good. <laughs> All seems happy. It's pretty good. It ain't coming out, we're good. I'm starting to add my dry ingredients to my egg whites. I'm making black chocolate macarons. The first macaron is gonna be an anise flavored with a pomegranate ganache. You gotta make sure you macronage, which is basically fold the meringue and the dry mixture well, and not too little. Macronage is a crucial part of creating the smooth, delicate shell. Overmix the batter, and the macarons will be flat and hollow. All about how you make this batter. Undermix it, and they'll be dense and cracked. Arm's getting tired. So I'm just checking the consistency of the batter. You don't want it to be too thin. You don't want it to be too thick. One hour done, three hours left, bakers. I'm very happy with the color. Alex, please tell us all about your macaron tower. I am making my uh, dark winter masker. Alex's design features a mask, but his flavors will be on full display with his black sesame and blackberry macarons. And how do you know when the almond's incorporated with the egg white perfectly? I draw a figure eight, and if that sinks into it within about 10 seconds, I know it's ready. Often for me, I, I underfold it, so I just need to make sure I keep going. I'm trying to be very precise when I'm filling the circles so that they're all gonna come out the same size. I'm counting in my head as I pipe. Two, one, two. Gotta get those air holes out. Tapping the macarons releases air bubbles. Loud. Sorry. While resting them allows them to dry out. They need to rest on the sheet before you bake them to form a skin so that when they puff up in the oven, you get the nice split and you get the nice smooth surface. Brother Andrew, tell us all about your macaron tower. This is my dream macaron tower. Growing up in the 90s, macarons were so elusive, so whenever my mom and I would find it at bakeries, we just rushed right to it. And our favorite thing to go to was pistachio. Brother Andrew's first macaron will contain a pistachio paste, then be topped with even more pistachios. And his second will be chocolate with a passion fruit ganache. And the um, decoration you're gonna be doing? The pistachio ones will have a chocolate drizzle on top. Same thing with the passion fruit one. Melt some dark chocolate, sprinkle it on top of it. Well, good luck, Brother Andrew. Thank, Thank you very much, much indeed. Thank you. Good luck. While the baker's first macarons finish resting, they get started on their second flavors. Next, I'm starting on my poppy seed shell with lemon buttercream filling macarons. Be the shells for a chocolate passion fruit macarons. So now I'm making the bananas foster. I am making a monochrome macaron tower. I thought I would stick to kind of the way that I dress. Dana's tower will reflect her understated style with a black chocolate macaron with white chocolate ganache and a bright white poppy seed macaron with a lemon buttercream filling. Now, decoration, what are you going to be doing? Because, I mean, obviously, the black and white, so are you going to be decorating them at all? Well, there'll be a little bit, but, I, you know, I'm not for tons of... This one is a little bit more liquidy than I'm used to. Something happened. 
probably with the batter. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some poppy seeds on top. Tap, tap, tap. While the baker's second batch of macarons rests, their first batch goes into the oven. These are going in at 315 for about 12 minutes. Now the bakers move on to their filling. I'm putting my ingredients together to the blender for my pistachio paste. Almonds help bring up pistachio flavor and also add structure. So this is for my blackberry curd, the blackberry edge, because blackberries are a pretty delicate flavor. Just lemon and a little more butter. I'm very particular about my buttercream. I am currently making my blackberry jam, which I will use for my filling. I'm not using pectin or gelatin. I've just upped the sugar a little bit. I'm just starting on my golden milk filling, so it's kind of like a spicy, soothing drink that, you know, you drink before bed when you're little. When you're a little baby Sri Lankan. Sarita is toasting to the holidays with her cocktail party macaron tower. Her anise macaron will feature a chocolate pomegranate. Her golden milk macaron will be filled with coconut and turmeric, the flavors of her favorite childhood drink. And you get a nice foot on the bottom? I always do. Okay. Outside of the tent. Inside of the tent, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Just concentrate on your timing to make sure that you get everything done on time. All right, I'm going to listen to that. They have feet, and they're good shape. So these are ready. Oh, God, I just made them too big, as usual. They haven't cracked. They have feet. Feet refer to the ruffles at the bottom of the macaron. It has been properly rested and baked. Yeah, so they seem like they're baked. These are probably a little underbaked, but I'm eager to get the next batch in, so I'm just going to take them out. Here we go. These are going in. I'm going in. Let's get cooking. One hour left until I'm macking on those macarons. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact. Get back here now. I feel like I need to start filling. I'm feeling the heat. I'm sweating right now. I am piping my um, black macarons with my white chocolate. So the golden milk filling's kind of like an odd texture, but like gooey, and I don't know if it's gonna set. Shoot, I'm trying to think of what to do here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. Shoot, I'm trying to think of what to do here. Do buttercream. So the golden milk filling just seems kind of gelatinous and not very appetizing at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it a buttercream instead. I never made a golden milk buttercream. You know, this is gonna be something new, but maybe it'll be really good, so we'll see. These are pretty thin. They're very small today. With less than an hour to go, the bakers take their second batch of macarons out of the oven. So now this is just all about getting it done. This is my green macarons right now with my pistachio paste. This is my rum caramel. It's going into my bananas foster. I just got to fill them. I was going to consider putting them back in the oven to firm up a little more, but there's no time. I got to get going. Oh, my God. I'm, like, so slow. 15 minutes. Now I got to start building. These feel pretty firm, so I'm just going to go for it. So I'm trying to make a spiral pattern. If the individual macarons aren't beautiful, maybe the tower can be. I need to deliver today. OK, now I'm panicking. So I got to get this done. I'm just trying to make pearl icing like lightning fast. Now I'm just trying to be in zen focus mode. I'm really trying to squeeze them in there. All right, now we've got to get these babies on. Five minutes left. 13. I don't know why. Looks pretty. Looks pretty, tastes horrible. 10, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five, four, three, three. Two, one. I'm going home. Brother Andrew, please bring your macaron tower down to Paul and Sherry. This is my dream holiday macaron tower. Overall, it's quite attractive. What I really like about it is the textures, that you've created the lines over the top, and then the little crumbles over there gives it nice, nice dimension. Thank you. 
I would have liked to have seen you finish this off with a little something more elaborate than the bow at the top. Yeah. We're getting towards the semifinals, and now it's time to kick it up. We'll do. Do you start with the green one? You say it's a pistachio with a um, pistachio buttercream? It's quite an intense flavor for such a little macaron. I like that. I'm going to ding you a little chewy without enough crisp. All right, and these are chocolate and passion fruit. Mm -hmm. I love a little tart, a little tang, a little sour, and this is what you have in the filling. The feet's good, the flavor's good, and it tastes good in the mouth as well. Thank you, Brother Andrew. Thank, Thank you. you. I like the colors. What I like about it is the sophisticated simplicity of it. Should we start with the um, poppy seed? It's very pleasant to eat. The seed on this macaron works. It just adds another. a little bit more with the flavor. You could have zinged it up a little bit more. What I would have loved to have seen is lemon curd. Just a little shot in the middle would have been very bright. All right, moving on to the double chocolate. The chocolate shell has a muddy quality to it, so I don't really get chocolate. I am getting the white chocolate. It's just a little bit oversweet for me. I just think you could have played more with flavors. Mm. They're overmixed. By overmixing it, you're deflating the egg whites. And there's no coming back from that. You've gone for style levers. Neither of them are decent. I know. They're not my best. The purple ones are blackberry flavored, and they have a blackberry buttercream around the outside, and then a blackberry jam in the middle. It's not very Alex, I'll give you that. The flavors in the blackberry just go flat. There's a slight kick of acid, but then it's followed by one-dimensional sugar. Well, let's see if we can pick it up with the black sesame. They're very chewy and very dense. You've got the paste, you know, you've got the seed. But the whole thing's got the texture of wallpaper paste. Mm. I wish the macarons were around the outside mm -hmm. and your flavors pop more. Yep. Thank Understood. you, Alex. Thank you. It's very neat, it's very thought through. You've even gone to the trouble of the royal icing at the top. The macaron mm -hmm. looks like you've gotten a nice rise, which gave you that full body. So we try the blackberry. That's delicious. Yeah, key to the macaron is the balance of filling to the shell. Yeah. I mean, you nailed it. And the other one is... Bananas. It's nice. I do like that one. You can get the banana. It, it's good to go out of the box. Overall, it's a beautiful presentation, and the flavor's great. taste with our eyes first, and the first thing we see is the after party. Oh, my gosh. They're a little bit big. If you made it smaller, they would have been lighter and therefore would have been more stable. Oh, I just ran out of time at the end, too. I need to take a class on decorating. I think a class on timekeeping is probably another one. Yes, I think that would be the first one. So we start with the yellow one. I had, like, the texture. I didn't want to serve it to you, so I remade a filling that was more of, like, a buttercream. Well, actually, I think your filling's OK. I, I just think you your bonding is not good. Now let's move on with the um, pomegranate one. Chocolate in there works really well with some of the spices. It's got a slight chew to it. It's just a shame. No, I'm sorry. That I... you didn't pull it together when it came to the assembly. When I bake, I focus so much on flavor. I never focus on presentation. I know I need to. Thank you, Sarita. Thank, Thank you, Sarita. Bakers. Please head outside the fire, and we'll call you back in when the judges make a decision. Ah, See what I did there? Did, yeah. did. Yes, come on. It's all right, babe. You got this. No, you're OK. The decision that you make right now decides who goes on to the semifinals. So this is huge. Do you know what? Send them all through to the semifinal. We'll get rid of two next week. Can we do that? Done it before. Uh-uh. This is tough for y'all. It's not easy this week, it's it, not. Across all challenges, Brother Andrew and Marissa have been the most consistent. Alex hit the wall when it came to the showstopper. Flat, worst macaron of the day. And Sarita certainly looked like a disaster. These bakers both struggled. Anyone could be going home. But you got to make a decision. Yeah. This is one of the hardest judging I've done not just in U.S., but in the U.K. too. Oh, so we're making history right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love it.
Cookie Week was tougher than the name would imply. And one of you will not be moving on in a competition for America's best amateur baker. But let's start with the fun part. This week's star baker is... Marissa. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sad to say, this week, the baker is... Sarita. Little sloppy was at it again. I'm just like not a tidy baker. I get so emotional because I just care so much about baking and I care about being under the tent. At least I have these two little sweethearts to go home to. It is beyond sad to see Sarita go this week. It was just timing that got her in the long run. Right. Bring it. I will. I'm in disbelief that I made it. They say macarons are humbling, and I was humbled today. I'm hopeful that I can show up for the semifinal and deliver my best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cookie week has really proved to be one of the most difficult weeks we've had so far. Marissa this week was certainly the most consistent. I think she did a good job in the signature. I think she did a great job in the showstopper and it deserves Star Baker. Okay. Thank you. Show me how that feels. That was so amazing. Like that's a great confidence boost going into the semifinals and far I want to go all the way to the end. And the dreams will lie on the starlit sky I find solace in the stillness as time goes by Love beats, rest my soul like a gentle kid In this peaceful moment, there's nothing mess I feel
Dreams where time stands still In the chill step flow we find our thrill